it was such an honor. And I was so grateful to just be in the business and to be in Hollywood and to be working on a set with stars. Congrats on this series. It's really awesome. And I have to say, your credits are wild. Like, I feel like you've done <laughs> you've done a little bit of everything. How did you get involved with this series and why did you want to bring this story to life? Uh, oh, did you also see I'm an actor in the show as well? Are you? I am. I'm in uh, I'm Maurice, the head of Lakers security. Oh, my God. So if you missed it, but the guy that's stopping Pat Riley from getting into the forum, that's me. Oh, my God. You really <laughs> do do it all. Jeez. Uh, I, I try. I'm trying. <laughs> I, I got kids. I got a feet. I got involved with this. Max Borenstein, our showrunner. Um, we've been collaborating on things for the about the last decade. And he reached out to me and asked me to be a part of all of this. And, you know, once we had that conversation and I saw what it was about, it was a no brainer. So Lakers obviously have like a massive fandom and you've worked, mm -hmm. you know, you've worked on Marvel, Star Wars, all these amazing properties. Where does winning time rank in terms of just getting it right for the fans and really wanting to get it right? It's at the top because you don't have anything else to compare it to. It's like all of those other things sort of have this pedigree behind them of years and years of, um, you know, already having material established. And here we're sort of breaking the fourth wall, no pun intended, of creating something that people really haven't seen before. Unfortunately, I'm old enough to have remembered a lot of film and television shows that were sports themed that didn't really do the game or the players who played the game. They didn't represent them as well as they could have. And I think we went out of our way to add layers and dimensions to the players and to the owners and the coaches and everyone else involved. Uh, it's sort of a love letter to a period of time, but also to the Los Angeles Lakers and the game. Well, I definitely learned a lot watching the show. When you were diving in, was there anything that you were most surprised to learn was actually true or something that maybe you didn't know? <sighs> there were a couple of stories, so certainly the Jack McKinney story. I did not know his story in that way. And here's a guy who was a, an innovator of the game, who basically took before him, Guys played a really slow, conventional style of basketball. It was very traditional. Where you had this other thing happening on the streets of, of America, on the courts of America, where guys were playing up-tempo street basketball. He infused both of those things, and no one remembers the guy. And the Lakers sort of embodied uh, that transition and evolution in the game from the way the game used to be played into a modern game that we recognize today. And a lot of that was due to Jack McKinney. And then there was the Spencer Haywood story, another guy who started free agency. You know, the stuff that LeBron and Kevin Durant and a lot of these guys are doing and moving around from team to team, they wouldn't have been able to do had it not been for him. And I remember I grew up in Maryland and uh, the Bullets were our team, uh, now the Wizards. And basically when you had a team, you had those guys until they retired. Like there, was, there wasn't a lot of moving around, but because of, this guy, you had a lot of, um, it changed a lot of the way the business of the game uh, is conducted. And at what point in the process did the cast start coming together? And were there any, any things about the castings that maybe changed a little bit about, you know, the writing or the characters uh, and the way you wrote them? Not so much. I mean, I think um, the casting of the players was the hardest part, you know, because we've got you know, on one end, we have these Oscar winners and we have these storied celebrated, the Adrian Brody's and the Sally Fields and the, the, uh, to John C's. But on the other side, trying to find actors who could not only play basketball, but act and embody these iconic figures who we sort of have a relationship with as you believe, you know, Magic Johnson, by the way, he played the game of basketball. And he's become such an iconic figure in the world of business that finding somebody who could just smile or maybe throw a good pass wouldn't be enough. So we were blessed to be able to find Quincy Isaiah, who not only embodies him as, as a basketball player in his personality, but when you get to know him as a human being, he's the happiest guy on earth. Like he sings in the makeup trailer. I don't understand it. I feel bad for the ladies in the makeup trailer. But he has the spirit of optimism that just uh, is infectious. And it feels like if I was playing with Magic Johnson, I would want him to be like this guy. And the same thing for Dr. Solomon Hughes, who plays Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Um, 
find a good guy that's seven feet tall, can play the game of basketball, loves jazz, and is an educator. How rare, and looks like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Uh, it's such a rare thing. And um, I think certainly on those two fronts, we got really, really lucky. Um, and, find, and neither of them had acted before. And if you've seen any of the episodes, they do such a great job. And I think it's a testament to their attitude and work ethic. I have to mention, I, I know I said this at the beginning, that your credits are wild. You were a PA on Blade. I was. That's amazing. Like that was my first job in LA when I lived in my car, I needed a gig. And I used to do PA and AD work back in uh, on the East Coast. I made a couple of friends. And when I came out, Blade was my first LA gig. God, what stands out to you most when you just look back on that experience and especially where you are now? That I never really felt like, you know, when I tell younger writers or people, when they ask me about how I came up, they were like, oh, my God, you lived in your car. It must have been horrible. And it really wasn't. I felt it was such an honor. And I was so grateful to just be in the business and to be in Hollywood and to be working on a set with stars and, you know, Wesley Snipes in The Blade. And I'm a comic book guy and I'm working on a Marvel. This was before the big Marvel movies and what it's become. This was like one of the first modern takes on modern comic book takes. And it just was so, it was so fun that there's a certain sentimental viewpoint that I had when it comes to all of that in that period of time. And now, you know, I have the same thing, but it's from a different, I look at it from a different lens. Now it's an honor to be able to influence how a story like this is told, you know, to a lot of certainly younger people have no idea what these Lakers, you know, were or are who these people were. And our show will be that first look that many of them have into what it was like to live during that period of time and play basketball during that period of time. And so there's nothing but good. There's nothing but good for all of it. That's awesome. Well, congratulations. That's my time, but such a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. Thank you for doing all of that due diligence and looking me up and stuff. So I <laughs> no, appreciate I, it. I had so many more questions. I want to talk about Lando next time. <laughs> oh, there you go. Next time. Next time. Thank you. Bye.